gates, mm -hmm. but they really aren't. They really left the gates open for this whole industry to just flourish of, uh, of, of harvesting aborted babies. And the mothers, it's like what Alex said, the mothers aren't getting any money from this at all. Right. They don't see any benefit. It's just these companies that are, that are perched over these abortuaries like vultures, just ready to pick apart yeah. uh, baby carcasses. And right. Well, ugh. and the Planned Parenthood CEO, they sent a letter um, to Congress this August 27th, where they talk about how they currently receive just $60 per tissue specimen. So you're thinking, oh, you know, that's not that. Well, per tissue specimen. So that means a leg, an arm, a liver, a heart, a head, anything that they're able to chop up and ship off. And turn into a specimen. The bare minimum $60 per that. So yeah. it's, I mean, they're making hundreds of dollars. Off and, and it adds up and who knows where it's getting chopped up from there. It's, it's really right. disturbing to talk about this. No, it's now, now, so after the, so say the baby comes out and it's a preemie and it's alive. Well, we got to keep it alive. Well, now they're injecting them with vaccines, even though before they said we, we're not injecting preemies with these. Now it's just like every baby that's born has to get a vaccine. I think the UK just passed something where they want to give uh, the hepatitis B uh, right when they're born. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that. I'll have to I'll have to look in one second. But they just passed a new law where they want to make it mandatory. But here we have two articles. They're written by Jeffrey Jackson for Infowars.com. On May 5th, nurse reveals routine vaccine-induced injuries. Talks about how the nurses are all aware that these vaccine-induced in injuries happen. Mm -hmm. And they're ready for it. They just... Yeah. It's no big deal because they're ready to help the baby when it's having breathing problems or it, it can't breathe or eat on its own after that. And then later, we, we got confirmation on it. So new JAMA study confirms nurse whistleblower routine hospital vaccine damage happening to infants. This is uh, came out June 22nd. David Knight had the nurse on, again, Michelle Routon. So this is the second interview he had on with her. I think when, when this came out... We have so much news that comes out. We didn't even realize how big it was. It, right. it took Jeffrey Jackson grabbing and saying, hey, guys, this is a big deal. Check <laughs> it out. And it is a big deal. And that's why we're talking about it again today and tying how it ties into this whole eugenics package, how they see us. Just like the caller Steve said, they see us as weeds. Right. So let's go to that video. This is about four and a half to five minutes from that longer um, uh, longer interview that was on, that's up on YouTube now. But uh, check it out. This is David Knight interviewing Michelle Routon. Well, I had mentioned that they go ahead and vaccinate premature infants on time, meaning that once they are two months old, they're ready for their two-month vaccines, regardless of the fact that they may still have supposed to have been inside their mother's stomachs and not even born yet. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that um, are we're seeing and are being said is are things like a um, neonatologist calling from the step-down unit down to level three to the more intensive unit saying, hey, I'm going to give these four babies their two-month vaccines this weekend. So I just want to make sure you had four beds ready because we know they're all going to have issues and need increased care. And that was bombshell information because that violates one of the core ethics of the medical foundation a profession that we've always seen and that is first do no harm they knew this was going to harm the children but they were going to go ahead and blindly or follow this schedule absolutely you know and i mentioned that i had sat in a call room before with a bunch of providers saying hey we have this 25 weeker that was so strong they never required intubation with a breathing tube to actually go onto the vent, had a less invasive type respiratory support. And you come in and they're like, oh, how embarrassing. We gave that baby his two month immunizations and now he's intubated and on the vent for the first time. Oops. Yeah, that, and it's just kind of blown off. That was amazing. So you told us that on May 1st. And then you contacted me last week and told me about this JAMA study, a Journal of American Medical Association the official uh, organization of uh, MDs. And here they do a, a study about the adverse effects after routine immunization of extremely low birth weight infants. Tell us about that study. Well, um, first, extremely low birth weight infants are 28 weeks in gestation or less or under 1,000 grams, approximately 2.2 pounds or less at birth. And you had a group of physicians and a practitioner that went into a database of a large neonatology corporation with almost 14,000 infants looked at 
And what the results said were that the um, set they were looking at the pre-immunization period versus the post-immunization period, and their sepsis workups went up 3.7 times in the post-immunization period. And sepsis means a blood infection, and so there was multiple labs drawn, blood cultures, urine cultures. They go ahead and they start those babies on antibiotics right away while they wait for results. So it's not a benign thing. Yeah, it's um, life-threatening, isn't it? Right. It's life-threatening. And even if it ends up not being an infection, they've still had pain, they've had invasive procedures, and they've had antibiotics given, which is not a benign thing for these babies that have very sensitive intestines. Um, and so it's a big deal. And then we had increased respiratory support two times higher in the post-immunization period. Um, and then intubation, actually getting intubated with a breathing tube and going on the vent was about 1.7, 1.8 times higher. And what really shocked me, I had to read it about three times, was when I got down to the conclusion, they said, based on this, there was no difference in reaction between single shots and combo shots. And so you can just go ahead and keep giving the combo vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no big deal. No big deal at all. Just keep wow. giving the shots to the kids because we have to keep them on that schedule. That schedule yeah. is the most important thing. It doesn't matter if there's adverse reactions because we have the technology to keep them alive yeah. so we could give them more shots. Maybe. That's how evil it is. Oh, it's I'm so afraid of having a child in this country right now. Well, it, you know what? It's actually not hard to not get your kid vaccinated. It's not very hard. You can do it. There's plenty of people out there that do it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if you think that they're there for your health, they're not. They're there to push Big Pharma's products on you. So we'll be right back after this. We're going to take these last four callers that are here. Cash, Taylor, Dave, Kylo, stay tuned. We're going to go to your calls. We're wrapping up the fourth hour of Overdrive on The Alex Jones Show. Rob Dew, Leanne McAdoo here with you till uh, 3 o'clock. I'm Rob Dew reporting in the voice of Richard Nixon. Actually, I'm Alex Jones here. Rob Dew is working on a breaking story. Actually, he had a meeting already scheduled before this all happened when I said he's going to start hosting the fourth hour. So he'd forgotten he had that meeting, so he ran into, into the meeting. He was already about 20 minutes late, too. He's doing a great job. My fault for making folks pull double duty around here. This studio is like a sauna now. Yes, it's I know you like it hot, so you're enjoying it. This feels like hell to me right now. <laughs> uh, but... Um, Massachusetts police cruiser shot at, catches fire. Yeah, this a, is breaking news. A police cruiser uh, in uh, Millis, Massachusetts, caught fire after being shot at Wednesday. The Massachusetts State Police tweeted, uh, we have no word on whether they were injuries. Massachusetts State Police aircraft were being used to survey the area. Again, this is how you destabilize the country. You get disenfranchised, angry folks. You have mainstream media and authority tell them to go out and attack it begins. Joe Biggs has got a report on this. Here it is. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com with some breaking news. Police say a gunman has opened fire on a police car in Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts State Police say a Mills police cruiser was shot at Wednesday. The department said in a tweet, MSP Air Wing also responded to Mills area following report of cruiser shot by a gunman. We have no word on whether injuries yet. MSP also responding, detectives, ballistic unit, crime scene techs, and fire investigator to Mills. Cruiser caught on fire after being shot. So the Massachusetts State Police has tweeted out saying that the patrol car was shot at by gunmen. This is happening right now in Massachusetts. We'll uh, try to keep you informed on what's going on. Currently, I'm standing outside I mean, of the Fox Lake Police Department as we're trying to get updates as to what happened with the officer shot yesterday. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. I tell you, these folks calling for killing cops and white people have got some huevos because uh, there will be repercussions even if the White House is giving them backing. I just, it's crazy. I mean, it is it is crazy. I know we got loaded phone lines, but we're, we're basically out of time here. Uh, we got people, Homeland Security drills, American terrorist, martial law drills is what they want to talk about. Maybe call back tomorrow, folks. I apologize. We got to end this now. We're in, here into the fourth hour. Uh, but uh, isn't Lee it crazy how people can put those kind of that kind of call out there, those videos and things like that on, on social media and everything, and it doesn't get taken down? No repercussions there with the free speech. But then when we show some news clip without the guy even shooting the lady on YouTube, we cut it out. On the video, it's like, we're cutting this out. And then we get a community guideline strike. It's totally fake. We'll have it reversed. Right. 
Right. Th th by the very people claiming we're censoring them. Right. Don't show the Planned Parenthood videos, but talk about killing cops all day. Well, it's just going to legitimize the total police state. I mean, the, the, right. the people that run this country are doing this for a reason. They're going to be able to really oppress black people now, especially because of these operatives they've got in their midst. Right. And uh, yeah. black folks need to be decrying these people big time. And I know a lot of these groups are. They are. The problem is they won't let those folks on MSNBC or CNN to counter it or MTV. Uh, MTV is weaponized media by 90-something-year-old Sumner Redstone that hates you and your family even more than Hillary Clinton does. And we just need to understand that there does not need to be any tit-for-tat or it'll start a crip blood war right. that idiots were involved in. I mean, are the patriots out there that dumb? No, but there are some mentally ill white supremacists and people that are undoubtedly going to go out. You're going to have stuff like Charleston now. And then the black folks are going to kill people, the idiot black folks. And then it's just going to be a big stinking snowball. And I hope Louis Farrakhan feels good now. And, and I hope, uh, you know, all these other people pushing this do. I mean, it's sickening. Yeah. But, you know, it's like the Turner Diaries dreams of this big race war. The white supremacists put out the same crap. And it's always these old men putting it out who aren't the ones that are out there going to be dying. Right. All I know is anybody who tries to hurt me or my family, I'm going to defend myself. And there's not going to be any holding back. I don't care who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take the safety off officially. Right. Good job, Leanne. Not only news tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness masquerading as the renaissance masquerading as liberalism it seeks to shut down free speech and the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the republican party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world the robber barons that control this planet are not free market they are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th, through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization 
operating. So join us this September 16th and 17th 